Hello. Thank you for joining us for the Grand Valley State University Scholarship Session. I am Enrique Verrett, Admissions and Financial Aid Counselor, and I hope you enjoy this 30-minute session. I will be here in the background to help answer questions in the Q&A feature throughout the session, along with our additional counselors as well. Please feel free to type questions throughout the session, and we will um, be able to answer them privately or answer them live as well. Um, when the panelist is done presenting, we will open this session up for additional questions. And so now allow me to introduce Mary Elise, who will be giving our scholarship session today. Thank you. My name is Mary Elise White. I'm an assistant director in the financial aid office, and my focus is on scholarships. So I hope that you learn a lot tonight. And like Enrica mentioned, we have two of our scholarship staff here with us, Kelly and Elle. They will be able to answer your questions throughout the presentation. So you don't have to hold them till the end. Feel free to ask as they come to you. And hopefully we'll be able to teach you a lot about scholarships, applying and searching for them and get all of your questions answered. I'll go ahead and get started. All right, so tonight we're gonna to go over finding and applying for scholarships. We're gonna cover the different types of scholarships, which include admission scholarships, my scholarships, which is the Grand Valley portal, and outside scholarships. We're gonna go over some tips and tricks, important deadlines, as well as frequently asked questions. So types of scholarships. And Enrica is going to kick us off with talking about the admission scholarships. Yes, yeah, so for our, our admission scholarships, um, our merit-based scholarships are automatically awarded to our students. And so basically what that means is that there's nothing that you need to do additionally in order to receive that scholarship. So basically when we receive your um, application information, your transcripts and those test scores, um, that's when we're able to utilize that information to award these scholarships. And so as you all see found here on the screen, you'll see our Laker scholarship. So our Laker scholarship, you'll see it's actually just a GPA requirement. So if you apply to Grand Valley and you have a 3.3 GPA, um, then you're automatically gonna be awarded the $2,000 scholarship. And then you'll also see our Award for Excellence scholarship. Our Award for Excellence scholarship, it includes a GPA requirement and a test score requirement. And so you'll see our GPA requirement is 3.5 and then, um, we require either the ACT or the SAT. We have no preference over which test that you choose to take, um, just whichever one that you would like um, to take. And as long as that test score uh, matches, then you're able to qualify for that scholarship. Now, the, for our merit scholarships, they are renewable for up to four years that you would be eligible to receive that scholarship. And um, it's for our students that are admitted to Grand Valley by December 31st. So for those that are admitted by that deadline, you actually have until July 31st to send in any updated information. And so let's say if you don't qualify for that 3.3 GPA, um, but by the end of your next semester you do, just go ahead and have that officially sent over to us and we'll be able to honor that and still get that Laker scholarship awarded to you. And the same applies for the War for Excellence. So maybe you didn't have time to complete your test score or, you know, different things could have happened there. Um, and once you're able to qualify, once you send us that updated test score, um, then we're going to be able to honor that and award you that Award for Excellence scholarship. So again, um, for these two scholarships, you do have until July 31st to send us any updated information to qualify. Now, our Award for Excellence Scholarship um, that we're looking at, the $5,000 scholarship, it will actually stack onto um, the next two scholarships that we're gonna look at. And so, it looks like it's loading. All right, there it is. 
Um, and so our additional merit scholarships is also our faculty scholarship and our presidential scholarship. And so these scholarships um, are awarded to our students and um, for those that qualify, they must compete in a scholarship competition in order to receive um, one of these scholarships. So competing in our competition, that is the only way to receive the scholarship. And our $5,000 Award for Excellence Scholarship that we were just looking at, it will stack on to either the faculty or the presidential, whichever one that you're able to qualify for. Um, now for the scholarship competition, um, basically our scholarship committee, they are going to review all of your information. So they're gonna be reviewing your test scores, your academic rigor, they're looking at your personal application information, those short answer questions, things that you've been involved in. They're gonna utilize all of that information to create a score for you. And based off of that score, that will determine the range that you will receive within those scholarships. And so um, just by attending the competition, you will automatically receive the minimum amount. So let's say if you are awarded the faculty scholarship, and you attend a competition, you would know that you have 5,000 from the Award for Excellence and 1,000 from the faculty just from, by attending the competition. Or if it's the presidential, you would have that 5,000 plus the minimum amount of 4,000. Um, of course, by competing, that gives you the potential to be able to um, receive an additional amount within that range listed there. Um, I do want you all to know our scholarship competition dates. Um, we actually have two in this month um, on January 23rd and January 30th and then we have our final one in April um, and that's going to be April 15th and for our students that qualify for our um, award of distinction scholarship they will actually receive an email and a letter and so um, once you all receive that that will give you a link to where you all will sign up for the competition date um, and it will let you know everything that you need to know um, to prepare for that day. And it also is going to be a Zoom call. So, um, so it'll just be a, a Zoom session um, that'll be about an hour um, during that competition time. Um, so again, you can still, um, you would be able to, from, this, from the time of now and April 15th um, or by April 15th, um, you can send us updated test scores or transcripts to qualify for these. However, the only way to receive these award of distinction scholarships is by attending a competition. So you would have to have that updated information in time for the April 15th competition deadline. And then on the next slide, again, just reminding you all, um, that again, this is applies for our students that are admitted by December 31st um, and the additional application information um, included in the application. Luckily for our students, um, and Mary Elise is gonna go a little bit more in depth in our my scholarships and all of that. Um, if there's anyone watching that was not able to meet that December 31st deadline, um, luckily there are additional scholarships that you all still can apply for. Um, and you all can still apply to Grand Valley now if you haven't applied yet. Um, and that application process, it would be a completed application. Right now, our fees are waived. So that $30 application fee is waived. You can um, apply for that now. Um, and then you would send in your official high school transcript. So either your high school can send that in or an electronic transcript system. Um, and then um, you can choose to send in your test scores or not. It is test optional. Um, so you can send them now or send them later on as well. And I will hand it over to Mary Elise. Thanks, Enrica. Now I'm gonna focus on our My Scholarship system. Now My Scholarships is our system that houses all of our endowed and department scholarships. So these are donor scholarships that generous donors gave the university funds that we can then turn around and award to students in the form of scholarships. The website is at the top of your screen. That might be the most important thing on this slide, but what you'll do at that website is you'll click the sign into my scholarship button. You'll sign in with your network ID 
and your password, those are provided to you in your admission packet. If you haven't been admitted yet, you'll receive that login information when you are admitted, but you do have to be admitted before you can start applying for these scholarships, so that is key. Once you log in, the first step is to complete the general application. And this is a screenshot of the first part of that application. The general application does not take that long to complete. It really is not very lengthy, but it is important to complete it as thoroughly as possible. It's the first step in applying for all the rest of the applications. There's over 500 different scholarships that you can apply for through this system. In any other scholarships that you apply for, when the committee is reviewing your scholarship application, they will see the information that you put in on the general scholarship application. So for example, you have the opportunity to upload a resume. You don't have to, but we encourage you to because that just gives your application more strength. You can, up, you can input three extracurricular activities. You don't have to, you don't have to input any, but if you have three that you can add, we encourage you to put all three and give us the details on those to just bolster your application even more. So once you complete the general application, what happens from there is that your application will automatically be matched with a number of scholarships. Those are called auto match scholarships. So the great thing is just by doing that one, you're automatically applied to a handful of them. Now the second type of scholarships are applied to scholarships. Now those scholarships have some additional requirements, some that you need to apply, some additional things we need from you, such as an essay, um, maybe a letter of recommendation. Um, sometimes it's just answering a yes or no question. So don't be intimidated by the apply to scholarships necessarily. Some are quick, others do require like an essay. How you find those is after you do your general application, on the left hand side there, those will show up as other recommended opportunities. So the system will take the information that you put on the general application along with what we already know about you. So what we have off your admissions application, like your test scores, your GPA, things like that. And the system narrows down what we believe you're eligible for, because we don't want you to get in there and be overwhelmed with just a list of 500 scholarships to apply for. So the system will say, we think you're eligible for these scholarships. And then you can go through and read the descriptions and the qualifications and say, yep, that looks like me, and then apply for those. So to keep track of all of these scholarships that you're applying for, if you click on the first tab when you're in the system, it's the My Applications tab. This tab is really helpful kind of throughout the process of applying for scholarships. When you're in the application process, you're probably not going to get in and do the process from start to finish in one day or in one sitting. So if you start applications but don't complete them, um, they'll show as in a drafted status. And then you can go back to this My Applications tab, see what scholarships you still have to finish. It gives the deadlines, which is also something really important to keep track of because not all scholarships have the same deadlines. It's also where we'll update once we start awarding scholarships if you're not selected for a scholarship. If you are selected, we'll send you an email, but that will also show in here um, if you're selected with a dollar amount and all of that information too. So this is just a really good kind of home page after you've completed the general application um, and some other applications to check back to see where you're at so you don't miss deadlines, things like that. So this is just, a quick overview of my scholarships. When you get into the system as you're applying, please let us know if you have technical issues, if you have issues uploading an essay, anything like that, we can absolutely help you with those things. The next thing I'm gonna to touch on is outside scholarships and searching for those. So outside scholarships, what are they? There are scholarships that are provided by agencies, foundations, basically any entity that 
is outside of Grand Valley. So most of you have probably done some sort of searching for outside scholarships, whether it's just typing in scholarships for college into a search function, um, and you may have been completely overwhelmed by the list of results that you got. There are a lot of different scholarships out there. So what we did is we took scholarships that other Grand Valley students in the past have been successful at getting or that are regional, and we listed them on our website. And we have also looked them over to make sure that they're not asking for information that you shouldn't be providing on scholarship applications like social security number, that they're not asking you to pay a fee to apply, that they're not asking for bank account information. All of those things are red flags when you're applying for scholarships. You wanna watch out for those. We also created a search filter on our page so that you can input your GPA, your grade level, those sorts of criteria and narrow down the list even more. So you can use the filter. You can also just look at the full list. But So when you go to the page, it looks like this. And it'll give a brief overview, the name of the scholarship, the dollar amount, in some basic criteria. And as you're scrolling through the list, if you see one that you are interested in, you'd like to know more about, you'd like to apply for, you can go ahead and click on that link that's at the bottom. And that'll take you to the detailed scholarship information about that scholarship. So for example, this one, the Burger King scholarship, it gives the description the requirements, the dollar amount, it'll give the deadline usually, um, the requirements, and also the website. So the important thing with outside scholarships is you don't apply through the Grand Valley website. Since they are outside entities, you will go to the organization or company's website to actually apply for the scholarship. So we provide you with the link to take you there. So moving on to some scholarship tips when you're applying, know your deadlines. As I mentioned before, lots of scholarships, different deadlines. Obviously, scholarship searching and applying isn't the only thing going on in your life either. So it's important to have some sort of system to keep track of what you're applying for, what you intend to apply for, so that you don't miss those. Because deadlines most of the time are very strict um, and they're not gonna reopen a scholarship for you. So it's important to know those. Do your research. In addition to these resources, local organizations, businesses, churches, maybe your parents' employers could also be scholarship resources. So this is a great place to start the things we've gone over, but definitely keep an open mind, keep your ears open for other opportunities for funding. Start early and stay organized. We usually recommend students to start applying for scholarships a year in advance of when they plan to use them. So now is absolutely the time to be applying for scholarships for next year. Be patient. Sometimes it can take months to hear back when you've applied for a scholarship. There are a lot of scholarships for committees to review, and then there's an awarding process. So it can take a long time for that process to go through. So apply, keep track of it. If you haven't heard back, especially for the Grand Valley ones, you can absolutely follow up with us. Um, but be patient, um, especially if it hasn't, if the deadline hasn't passed yet, most of the time uh, committees don't start reviewing until after deadlines, so it can take a while. And the last one is to write a thank you letter. If you receive a scholarship, uh, a donor-based scholarship, definitely write the donor a thank you. Um, also, if you apply for a scholarship that you need a letter of recommendation for, you know, if a teacher or a coach or something writes you a letter of recommendation, you know, send them an email, write them a thank you note, letting them know that you appreciate that because all of that takes time. And uh, donors really love getting those thank you notes from students. They really appreciate it. Deadlines to know. So most of the deadlines in my scholarships 
fall between January 15th, those are really the earliest deadlines, and um, the bulk of the latest deadlines are May 1st, but the vast majority of the deadlines in the system are March 1st. So March 1st is a really important date to remember. March 1st is also the FAFSA priority deadline for Michigan. So that's kind of why we picked March 1st. So that's a very important date to remember. So start early and keep track of those application deadlines and just know that especially if you're applying for outside scholarships, those deadlines can be all over the place. So know what you intend to apply for. If you find a scholarship that you're really interested in and you don't have time to apply for it right then, make sure to notate that deadline so that you don't miss it. All right, frequently asked questions. Can I apply for a scholarship I don't qualify for? In our system, in uh, my scholarships, you can apply for scholarships that you don't qualify for. However, we don't recommend it. When committees review scholarship applications, they absolutely look at the criteria and we only award students who meet the qualifications. So we recommend that students only spend their time on applications that they do meet the criteria. So your time is definitely better served applying for scholarships that you meet the criteria for. Do I have to upload a resume? You don't have to, but we always recommend students do upload the resume, answer all the questions that are asked to make your application as complete as possible. If you need help with a resume, our career services site does have some different templates and um, helpful tips on resume writing. They can also assist you with Zoom appointments and things like that as well for resume writing. How will I know if I was selected for a scholarship? So if you're selected, we will send you an email and let you know. And the status will also be updated on the My Applications tab. Can I get more than one scholarship? Absolutely. So apply for as many as you are qualified for. What are my chances of getting a scholarship? We get this question a lot. I think students are trying to figure out if it's worth their time or not to apply. Um, and it's a hard one to answer because there's no percentage that we can give you. Um, there's no real straightforward answer, but your chances are better if you apply for more. So it's definitely worth the time to apply for scholarships. And we're here to help you through that process and if you have questions we can look at your applications and give you advice um, to say you know oh it looks like you didn't answer this or you didn't really answer this question um, you could add more to this that kind of thing too as well so please use this as a resource and here is our contact information so you can email us, call us, we do Zoom appointments. So however you want to ask your question, however you feel comfortable. Um, hopefully you've been asking questions in the chat as well.